here. We'll talk a little bit about our story. It's, um, you know, a lot of this stuff we could be affected by or we could just turn off the TV and not worry about that and focus on what we need to do. Um, you know, I grew up in Portland, Oregon and uh, modest family, single child, uh, great parents and uh, I think they raised me right, you know, gave me good morals and good ethics and in uh, shortly after high school I think I took a year and a half of some, some you know, college courses didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, soon after that, I met my wife in 2001. And if you don't mind, I'm actually gonna grab this so I actually don't screw something up here. So much happened, we actually had the right out a timeline. Like, it's just, the last few years have been so crazy. Like, when did this happen? When did this right. happen? So, <laughs> in 1994, um, my wife who's here tonight, her name's Stacy, and uh, we, we got married in 1994. Uh, I, I was 21, and um, she was 24, I think, at the time. So that and would make you 30? No, 40. No, not 50. 41. Yeah. 41. So in uh, 1995, um, we were married for a few years, and, uh, or a couple, couple years. So I got started into a, a property management. It was by mistake. It was just something that, again, I didn't have any really goals in my life. It was like, okay, here's a job. Let me try it out. Well, you know, later on down the road, it was a real big benefit for me. However, um, it was something where it was kind of easy. So I'd wake up, I'd walk outside, I'm at work. So I'm the guy that you would call at three o'clock in the morning to come fix your toilet when it broke. And uh, for a while, I actually liked the job. It was a pretty good, pretty decent job. In 1996, uh, we had our first child, Avery. He's in the back of the room doing all the sound. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my family later because uh, Mark Kohler and them told me to hire my kids for tax benefit. So we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so there he is, he's working, he's getting paid tonight. Um, in 1998, it was a pretty big year. We actually bought our first house. And I knew nothing about real estate. I just knew that the American dream was supposed to be get married, have kids, you know, have a good job, work 40 hours a week, work you know, 40 years of your life to get a $40 watch at the end of it. And then, um, this was a special house to me. This is a house I grew up in. And this is my grandmother's house. So I spent probably half of my childhood over at my grandmother's house. It was cool, it was up in Portland, Oregon. And uh, it was a big deal for us, you know, because a new family starting out. Well, I, I actually purchased the house with what was called a negative amortization loan. And if anybody knows what that means, it's a normal PITI loan is you make a payment, you, some goes to principal, some goes to interest. Well, in this one, only a little bit went to interest. So the rest of the interest every month would be tacked onto my principal. So when my mortgage adjusted to a regular mortgage, it went from 423 a month, and it, I think it went up to 1400 and something a month. Well, during that time, that was 1999 when my mortgage rate adjusted, and it just so happened to be about three months after my wife, we found out my wife was really sick. Um, she, we were pregnant with our third child, and she ended up, we find out after we had our baby, uh, Celeste, our last one, that it, she ended up with fibromyalgia. So she was really sick, she was in bed, she couldn't, couldn't move. During that time I was working three jobs, but that really wasn't conducive to our lifestyle because how can I take care of a family while not being there? It didn't, didn't make a lot of sense. So we, I kind of just kind of threw my hands up and said, we gotta start all over. We've we gotta do different, I can't do all of this. So we ended up, what we thought we would do was short sale a house. And back then nobody knew what a short sale was, but somebody thought of this brilliant idea. Well, it turned out it wasn't a short sale. Everybody got paid in full. And I actually walked out of there with $800 in my pocket. So I bought the house for 126, I sold it for 163. After the bank took all of the money, after the, the realtor got paid as well, I walked out with 800 bucks. So we rented a U-Haul and we filled it up with gas and we drove down to California. Me and my three kids and my disabled wife. So we stayed at my father-in-law's house, my mother and father-in-law's house. Great people, wonderful people. Gave me a chance to get started again. And um, back into property management I go. And actually before we left working those three jobs, I had started my own handyman business as well. So starting the entrepreneurship, starting the, the I wanna work for myself kind of thing, I really don't like working for other people, that was starting to get into my head. I just got tired of working for somebody else. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump in here real quick. Um, that some people are wondering why we're telling our stories is we've had a lot of people ask us, you know. Uh, we've showed up 
here. Um, we've, we've been working this club. Uh, you know, people are hearing about all of our success stories, but uh, you know, where, where'd you come from? How'd you get here? And so we want to share this with you because uh, Daryl and I, we come from very different backgrounds, but, but we'll see that we converge, ended up converging together on a, on a parallel path. And, and we're just hoping that, that we can identify okay. a lot of people here. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of seasoned investors here, a lot of seasoned entrepreneurs, a lot of new folks. So there's a reason for it. I mean, it's, uh, we, we come, all come from this similar backgrounds and have similar struggles. So I just want to jump in and say that. Yeah, thank um, you. This is so you could see we're, we came from the same, with the same stuff you did. Yeah, and, and a lot of people with success, you know, you don't hear about the struggles. You don't hear about the hard times that they have. And I just want to be able to share that, you know, life all life kicks us in the butt, you know. It, but what we do is we get up and we keep moving. And we don't let those obstacles and those hurdles stop us from going, you know. When I caught the, the real estate bug, when I caught this little dream, I, I, I let nothing stand in my way. And... You'll hear about that in a second because, uh, well, let me hurry up here. Um, we moved to California, ended up back in property management, which is kind of nice because uh, over in Rancho Penasquitos, it was a place where I could work and they gave me a free apartment. So I got a little bit of money and, and a free apartment. Great. I get to move out of my father in law's house and take care of my family again. You know, I'm 30 something years More old. More importantly, to get out of your mother in law's house. Yeah. So. Um, well, it doesn't end there. I, we end up back at my father-in-law's house, and, and I'll tell you that in a minute. So in 2001, that's when we moved to, to California and got a job, worked for about four years there. And in 2006, I saw a little sign on the road. It was a yellow one. Um, Pete Sanchez can probably relate to this. I know you can because you called off the same sign. So a real estate investor seeks apprentice. Wow, after reading Robert Kiyosaki's book and seeing this, uh, this little sign on the side of the road, I'm like, well, it's fate. You know, this is how it has to be. So I called the number. Turns out it was kind of a multi-level marketing education program for real estate. It was kind of two-sided. One was recruiting and then one was actually education. And I'll tell you what, and, and you can vouch for this, it was some of the best education we ever got. It was amazing. And that's what launched yeah, us. Surprisingly, in, considering how many guru programs are out there, it's, it's, it was a good one. It was great. And it actually gave me incentive to, to move forward because it wasn't just the education, it was the people in the room that I was with. It was the, the people on stage, it was people just like you that we were able to network with. And personal development was a huge part of this as well. I had no idea what personal development was before this. Now I realize that it was, it was something that was absolutely necessary for me to move on and, and you know, become successful. So 2006, I jumped right in, quit my job. I thought, I'm gonna make a million bucks this year. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, I partnered up with uh, one person. Um, we tried to do the sales side of it, that didn't work. And then partnered up with a family member, and we had a little bit of success. We did some flips down in Mississippi. Uh, things were going well. And about that time, I started seeing this big dollar signs over here, chasing the easy money through bulk REOs. So I kind of left that business partner and uh, chase this bulk REO white rabbit, I guess is what you call right. it. Maybe and that's about the time that you and I met. Really hooked up, yeah. And so, um, so I'm gonna jump over to my story because this is, this is where Daryl and I started merging together. And I'll throw it back over to you a little bit. Um, so my background was the, uh, uh, you know, get a, go get a job, get married, have kids, you know, get successful that way, but get, that, get the education. So, so I come from the high education side, get that high powered job, right? And, and that's what you're supposed to do. That's, that, that's the track I was on. So I, I think it was also, I just never wanted to leave school because I didn't know what the heck I was gonna do in the real world. So, so I really, I ended up, so I went to uh, UC Santa Barbara for undergrad and I started out as an engineering major there you know, electrical engineering. And uh, after a couple of years of that and partying too much and being on the um, uh, probation a couple of times, I got my act together and got off probation. Uh, when, and I thought, oh, maybe I don't want to be an electrical engineer. So I go into the dean's office and say, well, I, I, I think I want to do mechanical engineering. And I just got this slap in the face from, from the, uh, the head of the department. He said, well, if you're not sure, maybe you should just get out of the department altogether because there's this huge waiting list of people that would love to take your spot. And I'm like, well, thanks a lot for the help. You know, <laughs> trying to get some counseling. So I went out, I walked out all mad, and then I thought about it. And I'm like, well, maybe they're right. 
So I just went and declared for a while, spent a whole year kind of playing around in, in college, trying different classes, and then I ended up um, at a summer school course taught by a graduate student in genetics, and I was just blown away in, in antibody technology, which back then, I mean, now they teach it probably in fifth grade, but back then it was cutting edge, <laughs> and, and I was like, wow, we can really actually do this? This is amazing. So I've, I've got to do this. So, so that's, I focused on that. So I ended up getting a, a bachelor's in uh, biochemistry at UC Santa Barbara, and, and it turned out, well, you can't really do anything with a bachelor's. You, you have to go all the way to PhD. Uh, otherwise, you hit a glass ceiling really quick and you just end up as a lab tech. So you know, I said, I guess I'm getting a PhD. So I ended up at uh, UCLA and, and got into their PhD program. And this is, it is also kind of my family's background. So they're all education, get your big job. So they're doctors, they're lawyers, uh, a Nobel Prize winner, um, you know, authors. So it's also a lot of pressure. Um, so so that, I was kind of used to, to that track. But they all kind of had jobs. And, and uh, so I ended up uh, getting my PhD at UCLA. Um, I met uh, Tama, who was going to become my, my wife. Actually, no, I, uh, we left UCLA. Uh, I came to San Diego to do my postdoctorate at the Burnham Institute. So that was in 1998 I graduated. I postdoc at UCLA, then postdoc at the Burnham Institute here in San Diego, and then uh, and, and got married in 1999. And in 2000, uh, Tama moved from Los Angeles here. And uh, so I went into the biotech industry. Here, and and that's where, you know, I realize, like a lot of other folks here, that, you know, you've got W-2 jobs. Uh, it, was, it turned into a high-paying job. I started out uh, with a postdoc. I was making $17,000 a year. And then I got into a $40,000 a year job. So not that, not that big of a deal with a PhD. Um, but ultimately, I worked my way up to where I was making six-figure income. But I was still trapped. And what happened while I was working in industry was... Um, I was only two years at the first company. In, in 2000, biotech tanked. So this is a time when everybody else was, was doing great. You know, the housing market was just starting to come up and that was gonna scream up in, you know, sort of the early, mid 2000s. Everybody was feeling good, everybody was borrowing, credit was, was easy, and I was struggling. I went through three companies and five jobs. How does that happen? Yeah, it, the math is because was one company laid us all off and hired us back and laid us all off and hired us back kind of thing. So I was I was getting that yo-yo effect. So so Axiom Biotechnology is my first place I worked. Got uh, they went under. I I walked in there. I was going to move out and I said I need my last paycheck. And uh, and HR said, Oh, you're getting the last paycheck. And I said, Well, I know I need my last paycheck. They said, No, you're getting the last paycheck and there are all these people behind I just happened to be first in line and so they shut down um, ended up at what I thought was going to be my next uh, 10 year career with Sonomics and uh, after 11 months and, and taking all the hard work I did for them they, they actually did go public they did really well but in doing that uh, all the investors fired upper management that got them to where they were which is a smart move on their part and and they hired a new management to take them public that knew how to do that better because uh, the other guys were startup people and so they came in and they streamlined that company and i was part of that streamlining process and and they cut me and my whole team after being there for 11 months because on month 12 all of our stock options kicked in and to this day I'm still signing for their legal department patents. I, I have 26 patents in 21 countries with that company, and I don't get a dime. But I sign them every year, so because I'm legally bound. And what the hell? So, <laughs> so I was, then I ended up uh, at, at my third company. Um, somewhere in there, we bought a condo, my wife and I. Okay, so we moved into our first home. Okay, and. Then I ended up at the third company. We moved from the condo to a house. We kept the condo and rented it out. So now I've become a real estate investor. Okay? And, and I actually still own this condo to this day. It was the one smart thing I did without knowing anything back then. My next move in real estate was the dumbest thing I ever did. And, and I got creamed. And I'm still paying for that, um, which is why we do things smarter now. Okay, so we moved in the house. 
uh, had had uh, the first of, of two girls. She's now eight. All right, and we moved into this house. Let's see, did I did I get fired yet? Let me look at the timeline here yet. So, <laughs> I, yeah, he's like, did I buy this? Yeah, well, I bought a seven plex. I'm gonna see, did I get fired first and buy it, or I bought it and then got fired and got hired back? So, um, yeah, I've gone through through unemployment for a while. Okay, yeah, we got we got into. Uh, we bought the house two four thousand four. Okay, yeah. Then then we bought this. So I'm like, well, this rental thing is really cool. You now let's get another house. So it's getting really hard to find a house. And it's like, well, then like everybody, let's look out in Texas and Ohio and all these places, you know. And everybody's selling stuff over the internet, and this is the way to do it. And then I found this thing that actually almost cash flow. It was like a, you know, it appeared to be a six to seven percent cap rate in San Diego, which is unheard of. It was in Spring Valley. It was sitting right on the freeway, and it was it was in a war zone, but it was surrounded by like nice stuff. I'm like, ooh, well, th this will eventually squeeze out the war zone, unless. Things happen like they did in 2006, 2007. So I bought it. I was like, oh well, you know. And I bought it for almost a million bucks. I, we got it for like 865, but really all in, we were we were into it for like 950, right? After all fees and everything. Pay off Tama student loans for that. That's cool, all right? So just stupid thinking. Okay, so we pick this thing up, and guess what happens right after I pick up the sevenplex? Crash. Mm, yeah, two things. So, so I picked that up in 2005. I refied it. I had to move quick, so I got it with hard money. I went to go refi it in 2006, and the market crashed. So I couldn't get the good loan on it. I got stuck with this this hard loan. Eventually, I did have somebody come in that took out the hard money guy, but it was a horrible loan. And I had to come in with a lot more money. I had to come in with a couple of other private investors and, uh, and, and come heavier down on it. So now I'm sharing it. And then I got fired again. Holy crap. OK. And then we had our second child. So I'm sitting on the seat. <laughs> so I've got this big album. Expenses, expenses, expenses. Yeah, expenses, expenses, expenses. OK. And it's funny. So the company fires us all. And then three months later, they call us up. Because what they do is, they, you know, upper management doesn't fire themselves because, you know, even though they earn the most and we thought they did the least, that's what we complained about. And then they keep all the, the, the you know, the people that cost the least, right? And, and they fire all the middle management, which is where I, I, I was. Um, but they call us and said, well, nothing's getting done. Because there was nobody to translate, you know, all the craziness from up here into actual work and give it to the guys down here. And also to shield the guys down here from the nuts up top. I mean, that's really what man middle management does, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so they, they hired us back. And, uh, and then in there, uh, driving around, yeah, I, I saw the yellow, I, I was thinking, I gotta do something different here. I, you know, so I saw the same yellow sign, a real estate investor uh, seeks apprentice. Um, I wrote that number down. I saved it in my drawer forever. And then it was, uh, they let us all go again. And that's when I went into this thing. And, uh, and I went nine months unemployed. And, and, I, and I got to the point where I didn't even want to get a job anymore, because I forget it. And, I, and as I'm learning the real estate end of, of this thing, you know, I, one thing I learned is I didn't want to just jump in and do something stupid. So I put the real estate stuff on hold, and I got into the sales. And I actually started doing pretty good on the sales eventually. Not during the nine months I was unemployed, and my wife started begging me to get a job. So. So I did go back to that old company, and I begged them to hire me back, and they actually did, because I, I, I was pretty productive while I was there. And, uh, and as soon as they hired me, I started making money in this other thing. And, and I actually, that year that they hired me back, just in the sales side, now I'm making you know, about 100 grand a year in this, I made like $50,000 in sales. I'm like, man, this is great. But remember, I had this alligator of a sevenplex. That thing was so bad that that entire 50 grand went right into that building. It ate it. It ate it, and it did that for five years. And it ate about that much <laughs> every year. So, so with that said, I mean, yeah. you know, we, we actually found each other through that same network. You know, similar situation, similar room as this. And uh, we ended up partnering up later on down the road in 2009, but in between there, uh, I, similar struggles. You know, I jumped into the real estate. It wasn't working well for me. I was unable to pay my rent. Um, like I said, I'd quit my job, and 
I'd actually borrowed, that's what it was. What kept me alive for creative a year financing. was creative financing. I went out and took one class at a college and took out $30,000 student loan and I lived on that 30,000 bucks for a year. That didn't last long and actually ended up going homeless. I was, it was, I don't know, it's like being on crack or something. I have no idea what that is, feels like, but I know that when I was in the situation, Nothing was going to stop me because I had to succeed. I had to not just show everybody else that I could do it, but prove to myself that I could also do it. So we, we met, we started a partner up. One of our goals is to put 20 properties in the pipeline in the first 30 days of business. Yeah, and so we, we actually, there was a, there's a switch that flipped in us. So, so we met, I mean, we're Daryl and I, we have these very different sort of backgrounds we come from. But we I have a PhD as well. Yeah. A public high school diploma. Right. <laughs> so. um, but where, where, where Daryl and, and I are great partners, I think, is uh, one, our passion's in the same place. We, we both have strong drives to succeed in what we're doing, which happens, in, and, and we both want to do pretty much the same thing. That helps. Um, but, but really, our, our, our basic values overlap a lot. I mean, just in, in, in personal, with family, all of that, and that's, that's really important, you know, in seeking out any partner, you know, whether it's in a marriage or a business or whatever. Um, so we're great uh, that way. But there is, we tried a lot of stuff together. We decided to partner up. We tried a lot of stuff together. It didn't work. And, and all the wholesaling, we found another, a third partner that was from the fa a family that had uh, backed uh, a good portion of uh, downtown San Diego and all the high-rise condos that went up there. So we thought we really hit a gold mine in this guy, but it turned out he was the black sheep and he was using us more than we were using him. We had to get rid of him quick. Um, so, yeah, and we're telling you this because these are all the false starts, all that, you know, we think we're gonna get there and then you crash and burn. You think you can get there and you crash and burn. All this stuff happens because you know, people are going and they come to us, how long does it take? When does this happen? You just gotta keep at it. You've gotta believe in yourself. And there are two other, um, students that went through uh, the same education process we did, the same sort of real estate college, that had started about a year ahead of us, and they were in Orange County. And, and they were, and right, yeah, Deborah and Misha, and, and they came down to speak and talk about what they were doing. And the idea of, and this is how we started really getting successful is flipping short sales. We do a lot more now, but this is how we got started. And we avoided it. We, we knew we knew how to do it, and we, we knew we were shown the smart way to do it by, by smart guys, but they're hard, and they take a long time, which is, you know, the huge... And I didn't have time. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm going homeless here. I don't have time for yeah, this. So I we want to get paid tomorrow. We're like, we kept going for that quick money, the fast, easy stuff, which didn't work, right? You know, so we kept going for the, the shiny object syndrome, that I need it now, and... And so Deb and Misha came down, and they were, they were doing this, and they were having huge success. They were in a room just like this, and they were speaking, and we knew them. And we, we knew we knew everything they did, minus like two questions that we'd get the answer to by tomorrow. And we looked at each other, and that's when something just went ka-chunk. I think we ended up at Denny's till 3 in the morning yeah. doing a business plan. We went okay, back. This is what we're going to do. We wrote up a business plan together that night in Denny's, yeah, until like 3 in the morning. And it really is, I mean, there's a lot of switches that will flip in you, uh -huh. and, and you think that you've come to the other side, and now you're motivated, but when the one that really flips and there's no going back you'll know. and you're going to do it no matter what, you know, unless it kills you, you'll, you'll know it when that, and that's what hit us. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we're talking, we're going to go put 20 properties under contract right. in a month. So we were really close to closing before I went, we're going to call it homeless. You know, here I'm dragging my wife, my three kids back over to my father-in-law's house, my mother-in-law's house. This is right over in Poway. It's not too far away. But, uh, you know, what really, I think, motivated me was the most was, and, and I love my mother-in-law to death, uh, no joke though, she would tell me, give up your dream and go get a real job. And I would hear this every single day. So I would pack my backpack up with a bunch of uh, resumes, I'd dress as nice as I could with the money that I had, and I'd walk out the door and I'd go straight to my office, which was... Uh, it was Jack in the Box. Well, it was Jack in the Box. Yeah, because yeah, they had free Wi Fi. <laughs> yeah. So I'd go to Jack in the Box and I would, you know, I keep working on my real estate. That's how I, had, I got online. I had, you know, one deal that we were getting ready to close. And, and actually, sure enough, I think it was about four weeks after we moved in, 
we ended up closing our first short sale. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, there's so much that happened in this. We're not going to give you guys everything. We don't have time. But he even, just to get oh. your mother-in-law off your back, he had some money saved up that he gave me. And then so, so and then I gave it back to him th through a paycheck. I cut him a paycheck that he can show. Just to, like, just to know, show that I had a job. Just stop talking to me. And, right? you know, let me go. Let me, let me finish this. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. With right. that said, I finally walked up with a 60 or six, it was a $63,000 check. I think we netted a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It was a $63,000 check. Right. And the way we got, I almost got fired so many times because he had the time. And so he was, you know, and I had, I was taking a little bit of money from my job and I was putting that into marketing, trying to get the leads and everything. See, so you were clocking 40 hours a week, but you'd actually only work like 20 hours a week. Uh, it's the other way. I was clocking about 80 hours a week and okay. working like 60. I, I was okay. in, insane. I mean, it's just. You However, know. you still, you were still praised for like the best. Oh, I got employee of the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So here we are. It's, uh, I'm taking three hour lunches uh, to, because we're Conference going calls, up, networking. Meeting, meeting sellers. I know the first one, I'm driving, I'm the one that has to go. He can't do it for some reason. I'm like, fine, I'll take lunch off. And I'm driving in the car and he's coaching me on the phone and I've got like books and stuff open and all kinds contracts I'm like okay this means what this means this and then I walk into this person like the expert right just complete posturing you know and we had actually Deborah and Misha really helped us out they let us use their story and they were our partners in it so if, you know if they uh -huh. needed a reference we use them we offer people the same thing partner with us use as a reference you need to start somewhere and build your resume uh, so I mean that's really how we did it they couldn't fire they wanted to um, the guy I reported to, uh, all he cared about was, was production. He didn't care whether I showed up or not, you know, so he was a great boss, you know. But the one above him, which was the CEO of the company, was all about FaceTime. He never saw me. Where's Imran? I don't get it. But if you go to their company website back then, I was like 75% of everything that they were promoting on there was me. Right? I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. So he really, he's like, ah, I want to fire this guy. I can't. So I was like, I got away with a lot. Um, and I knew I was. I knew it wasn't going to last. I knew it was, I was just, I was toying with fate there. Um, so that's, that's how that was. But yeah, so and then, then we closed uh, our first deal. I think you ended up leaving, you finally fired your boss. Eventually, yeah. So, well, we, so we did, six months after we said, we're going to put 20 under contract, we closed our first deal, made like 68 grand. You moved out of your, your in-laws. Um, and we, this this job I was going to stay out for one more year. I ended up staying out for two more years, and then, and I actually did. I had a lunch with the CEO and told him I was leaving and why. And he actually was uh, very impressed and wants to become one of the investors in our company. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so that was two thousand. Nah. Well, well, it was two thousand ten when I walked out of my job. Right. And we've been full time ever since. Yeah. So yeah, so so that's our basic stories where we came People from. People have been asking. I know. Sorry, that kind of took a little long time, but so, so our, from our first flip making sixty-eight grand to our most recent one, which is about to close escrow here. Uh, probably going to make somewhere one hundred forty, hundred fifty grand on on a single flip. So.